Woo! How do y'all like my Ric Flair intro? No? Okay, I won't do it the next video. Anyway, welcome back to another DLJ Works video. Today, what I want to actually talk about is really a follow-up to the last video that I did, and that was becoming a website manager. How I actually got a career, got a position as a website manager that's barely using any JavaScript, that's more so using HTML and CSS to do a lot of the things that I'm doing right now. I still have very few reason to actually write much JavaScript code, code at all, and I've been at my current position for about a year. And I wanted to share the hope that, because I know there's a lot of people out there where can I only get a job if I only know HTML and CSS. If you can prove that you can do some really advanced stuff with HTML and CSS, that you're highly proficient at it, that you know how to use it, then besides just writing a very basic, straight up, plain text website, all right? If you can use HTML and CSS to do some really advanced things like creating some deep function and form with just using CSS with auto population and that sort of thing. If you could pull certain of those things off, you could do crazy animations and highlights, then this is going to be beneficial for you. But I got some things highlighted here, some things noted, because if you can actually, and in that video also, I believe I talked about too, in terms of having a web portfolio on YouTube. And utilizing YouTube as your portfolio and just throwing a hunky dory, rinky dink website online and just throwing a few like projects, some of your best work, you know, on this website. If you actually have a YouTube channel, that would be of more benefit to you because one, even if you don't have a company actually just watching your videos to learn HTML or CSS, if you're doing tutorial videos, you're building an audience and you're showing a company that you have the ability to attract an audience. You have the ability to manage a community. You have the ability to communicate very complex things to a company. I mean, to a customer. That's what you're showing when you get a YouTube channel and you utilize that as your portfolio. And if you so wanted to, if you're so good at building a community and an audience with the YouTube channel, you won't have to get a job at all. You won't have to work for another company. Because you know what? The opportunity is going to show itself for you to actually maybe have your own business, maybe build your own product and service a community. So that's what this is all about. But I wanted to actually show you what you can actually do if you decide to have a YouTube channel. You decide you're looking for a company to hire you. Can I understand we all need experience. I know that I, w I wanted the experience. I wanted the job to hire me. But I was, like I said, I was always cooling because I was a teacher and I would just build websites and just work on my HTML and CSS skills in my spare time. And I had fun doing it. So I'm going to give you a few things that I'm going to show you in this video that you can actually do that will raise your skill level and give you some ideas on where to, where to take your HTML and CSS ability. Now, I don't know, really know. I haven't had the really too many opportunities to convert PSDs to HTML, but if you can convert, take a PSD, those that are still creating websites on Photoshop, I don't know how many people are still doing that. I think I tried that once and I just was like, no. I was just like, no, I'm good. I just I just won't. But if you can actually convert PSD to HTML, that would be good. Button animations. There are so many things, different things that you can actually do with button animations the transition effect that you can actually use you know and if you just type in let me open up a new tab and if i just type in cool css button animations i'm pretty sure i'll get something to pop up in cold pen here in a second um top button let's just go with the first one i'm just trying to give y'all an example let's see what's here on this website but we have button animations look at this look at look at that Look how beautiful that is. We look at the CSS and HTML. It's just that one button, of course. So you don't have much HTML script right written there. But look at this. That glow effect. And if we look at the actual code, they have the um, Z index set in here. They have the keyframe. They actually have animations just playing based on transitioning from one color to the next from easing in and out using those transition effects and being able to position that in a certain way so that's a really cool button effect that's really being creative you could think of something 
Maybe you see something in a video game and which I encourage every if you're a web developer, you really need to study indie game developers. You need to study game development to pull some really cool ideas and figure out how can I take this effect that's in this video game and convert that to HTML and CSS. All right. Look at this. This is another cool effect. This has a very classic Nintendo, Super Nintendo looking effect. 3D touch. And if we look at the all the CSS that's written here. So it's so really when they have the after pseudo element. When you press on it, the after effect, it, it, it transitions from one point to the next where it shows that it's mashed down. So that's another really cool thing. So really, like I, like I said, I'm showing you just this so you can actually see that. If you can really think outside the box and really get creative, maybe you, you like I said, you saw an effect in a game that you're playing. And you want to figure out how can I actually do that same special effect with just HTML and CSS. That will make you be a, a high tier guy. I'm not even going to say low tier guy. I'm not going to give credit to that guy. But yeah, man, you can be. Look at that. That's that's awesome. And this is with SC, SCSS. Okay, and this takes more of a. a SCSS, the difference between standard CSS and SCSS is that SCSS um, uses a more, the lexical structure is more in terms of JavaScript where I think you can actually use and add variables of your own. Like, for example, with this dollar sign, this convention here with this dollar sign and a name before it, you're creating a variable here and you can actually just use that variable to um, to really clean up your code and it makes it more efficient too. So that that's a these are just really good examples. All right, if you're really trying to do something really spectacular with your HTML and CSS, um, page tricks, flip card animations. Now, what I've done personally is I've taken this flip card right here that I saw on um, W3 Schools, and I was like, well, how can I add really create some buttons for my current job? And a job that I work at is Hornet Signs here in Waco. And what I did was I, I just took that idea and I figured out how can I alter this code and really make it to where I can create some custom buttons just catered and tailored to this company. And as we can see, if we look at the logo, it has the, the, the CYMK, which I thought was a clever play. I didn't create the logo. The person that was here before me did, so they did a fantastic job. But I wanted to do something to reflect that, to complement that. So I created these social media buttons, custom tailored buttons, just for this website when I first started working here. So this was my idea of taking something that was already done. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. I mean, if you can, if you can find a and invent something new using a code, kudos to you. But you don't have to do that. Take something that somebody has already done, some basics, and build on top of it. And maybe you actually may discover something new and contribute in that way and show your expertise in that thing because not only will you show that you understand the foundation of what's already laid out with this particular effect but you also have the capability of creating something entirely new with your own spin on it and you can actually just put your own signature because you created it all right you don't have to reinvent the wheel don't stress yourself out because I didn't, you know, I didn't do this from scratch. This isn't mine. Don't stress yourself out like that. Find something that somebody has already done. See how you can put your own twist on it, make it your own, and use that as a portfolio piece. And maybe you can do a YouTube video yourself showing your process. How did you make this happen? All right. Now, that's another thing I wanted to show you. When you have the skills of HTML, CSS, and you got other skills such as Adobe Illustrator, Adobe Photoshop, and, and making certain things look nice and, and cool in those applications. You need to show how can I bring all these things together? How I know HTML, CSS, Photoshop, and Illustrator. How what what projects can I actually do? What can I actually create that's showing that I'm bringing all of these skills that I have together? And that's the purpose of having projects in the first place. Another cool thing I want to show you before I get off this video, all right, somebody on CodePen created this really cool Super Mario 
auto populating animation where you have Mario just walking across the screen as you can see there's no JavaScript here at all there's no JavaScript it's just a comment here all right and it just tells you where they got the images from but there's it's just a comment in JavaScript you have a lot of CSS here to make the animations go the cloud just auto scrolling across the screen but this is this is really showing how you actually take Photoshop how you actually could take Adobe Illustrator and your HTML and CSS skills and bring all this together Can I guarantee you if we look at the code like if we look at the past and the HTML itself that person that actually created this this is the path is shown from another website this is being pulled from um, either another website it looks like a, a file folder path or maybe it was just uploaded from a Dropbox type application online I'm not really sure where this path leads to but they didn't they didn't draw all this in CSS I guarantee you that they just took the CSS to place elements and make it function because CSS pseudo behaves as certain JavaScript right now all right so that's that's what it is anyway forgive me that was my phone right now but I wanted to just do this video as a follow-up to kind of encourage you on a very small scale but for you to do big things that you can do some great stuff with HTML and CSS and get a good paying job with it you can get a good career just knowing these things if you can do something creative and you can think outside of the box get you a YouTube channel YouTube channel serves extremely well for you to demonstrate your expertise to other people maybe not so many other companies but I'm guarantee you there are companies online that are looking at what people are doing and they'll pull from that and some companies do still go to traditional around in terms of having a portfolio where you just they just easily go to a website www.johndavis.com and boom you have all your projects there and they can see what you've done but if you can explain if you can articulate very well to somebody who's looking at your stuff what you have did and you sound confident you know what you're talking about your expertise is laid out there your chances of getting hired even that much more than them just actually just looking at the project that you actually have and sometimes if your projects really cool it'll speak for itself you have to do very little talking at all so that's gonna be it for this video if there's something that I did not clarify something else that you want me to put out that you feel like will help you just let me know and I'll do a video on it all right thank you guys for watching see y'all in the next video God bless y'all